Hello and welcome to Trent Valley Railway. In this video we look in detail at the incline build from the lower level fiddle yard to the scenic level of the layout. So first we have the incline which I have created the framework, attached it to the walls and basically started off from the top layer um, which will have a sort of scenic section on it and then work my way downwards off that, going down to the level which will be the fiddle yard. The incline, as I've spoken about in previous updates, will be a two track incline um, around the whole length of the garage, which makes sure that basically trains of full length can easily get up and down from the fiddle yard to the scenic level without any problems. I've used a slightly different type of PSE timber uh, in terms of size and width to construct the framework for the incline compared to the, the uh, framework for the main baseboards that I've already completed. So we're now going to have a closer look at the framework itself. For the framework for the incline, um, I've used a slightly smaller piece of PSE timber and this is 18 by 28 mil and they come in 2.4 meter lengths and I've cut them up accordingly um, to then create the framework for the incline from what you see there on the left is the scenic level down towards the fiddle yard. So I started off uh, at the scenic level height here and I've worked my way across. You'll see that the old test incline there still remains on the uh, sort of bottom level there. But as we come across then it comes towards the first corner here that the uh, incline has to negotiate. So I've um, braced those timber PSE joints into the uh, ones that come across from the, the higher level. And then as it comes around here, it then carries on then in a straight line all the way down towards the other end of the garage. So that the framework for the incline effectively sits like a shelf off the wall at the appropriate points. I've tied it into the plasterboard uh, for the walls on the garage um, using some grip it fixings and these are the red things that you see in the picture here um, one above and below each of those connection points to the wall to make sure that the framework stays as as it should be and I've also taken a very long process here in, in making sure that the incline is calculated for the gradient so that the trains can get up and down as per the test incline I had previously. For the framework to also stay stable and at the right height, I've used brackets in between the uh, joists where possible to make sure that the connections stay still. Uh, and I've just screwed those in using some small wood screws. Moving down towards the garage end of the layout, the incline um, is then appropriately missing the breeze blocks uh, which are situated halfway down the garage so i've kept it at the specific width away from that all the way down um, and then you'll see as it comes down towards the garage door there is then another corner and here is all my supplies which i've been using to prop up the framework so that after a while it sets in the correct position for it to then be left as a sort of cantilever freestyle framework which is just coming off the wall. To give you an idea of what the end look will be, there will be just a two track railway that goes up the incline and obviously then in the opposite direction comes back down. Um, I've just set out the double track on the uh, plywood that will sit on top of the framework for the time being just to sort of see what the aesthetics look like of that. The plywood is at around about 12 and a half centimetres wide and the framework underneath then is, is a little bit less than that 12 centimetres to make sure that I have a slight overhang with the plywood. What the framework also allows uh, for is, is effectively the power to be eventually connected up underneath the tracks to make sure that uh, they can run under the framework and under the plywood uh, to connect up the DCC power for the uh, the tracks as they run up there. I've also put the 
spirit level uh, on top of that section there which very faintly you might be able to read it says 1.6 degrees uh, which was the gradient that I was trying to achieve that equates to around about two and a half percent so it's between 1.5 and 1.6 degrees as it goes around some of the corners um, I've eased that down to around about 1.4 um, and then as you can see there it has a bit of a mind of its own at times to tell me whether it's slightly 1 1.6, 1 1.7, 1 1.5 um, but it's near enough where I want it to be. On to the corner pieces for the incline and this is where the, the framework and calculations started to get a bit more interesting. So each of the um, radii for the track here are around about third or fourth radius so that won't be too much of a problem. However what I did find with the test incline was that keeping it at 1.6 degrees all the way around uh, the corner here was starting to cause issues with some of the longer trains and things started to derail. Hopefully that will be resolved by slightly reducing the gradient around the corner here um, and also around the rest of the incline. But what will also help is now that I've got a much sort of flatter surface with the piece of plywood that will sit over the top of the framework and if we take that off you'll then see that how this framework has been built is very much uh, at right angles to mainly support the ends of the corner but also support then the middle middle section of the corner piece um, and I've gone into the plasterboard wall in the far corner there with the two that come out from the scenic level and then I've braced the uh, main straight down the length of the garage into that corner piece to try not to waste too much wood uh, and basically make sure still that the framework can be supported off the plasterboard walls without having to put more sort of support pillars from the framework there down to the fiddle yard which would then mean I'd lose a lot of space on the fiddle yard. It would also mean that it could start to clash as well with the incline as it comes down to the bottom level of the fiddle yard. You may have noticed that the incline is in a different position to where I had the test incline in, in the previous layout updates and um, this is where I'm looking to make sure that it doesn't clash uh, with any of the garage wall as it comes around uh, the corner at the top there with the with the breeze blocks uh, and then as it comes down towards the fiddle yard level uh, I've also made sure that it stays in a in a straight line here as it comes towards the next breeze block in the in the centre of the garage, and then I've used the Woodland Scenics two percent foam risers there to provide a nice gradient down and onto the fiddle yard. I've still got a bit of work to do here to fully integrate the incline into this fiddle yard level. Uh, and I need to work out how I want to create that incline uh, so it creates a nice smooth transition as it either goes up or comes down off that fiddle yard level. So looking at the same section here but looking down uh, from above you'll notice as well that the incline as it reaches towards the fiddle yard, the wood, um, I haven't got enough at the moment to create a sort of double track section along there so I've just only got just about enough for for a single track uh, along that thin thin piece of wood I need to go and get some more plywood cut it up to the right size and then also do the same so you'll see on, on the on the on the top top level there where I've got the single track but there is space for two um, that needs to be cut properly to size all the way along uh, with new pieces of plywood in the corner um, that's just sort of wedged into the wall at the moment um, you, I've got a fixing in place there as it comes around the bend and then it carries on a, around that corner there climbing up underneath the section which has already got sort of the, the, the top level scenic scenic level framework on it I've been testing trains which you'll also see shortly in, in this video. But however, testing trains in some instances has, has resulted in potentially a few 
minor issues. Um, it's a long way down from that section of the layout, particularly to the to the floor of the garage, but also as you can see as it's climbing up here, it's, it's quite a distance between the fiddle yard level and then the scenery section level. Um, there's, there's obviously the distance there that I've spoken about in previous videos, but to make sure when things go wrong um, that I don't have any major disasters, um, particularly at this end here around the corners, um, what I've done is I've added in some pipe insulation uh, and I've got this from, from Wix. Um, this is standard stuff um, which is flexible for domestic plumbing and heating but I've sort of used it in, in, in this um, to, to basically create barriers at the side of the incline to make sure that if we do have a, a, a derailment and, and a train comes off the track um, then hopefully it sort of crashes into this into this foam pipe insulation and so here is exactly why I have added those foam pipes onto the incline to make sure that when it does derail the actual train is then contained on the incline and doesn't fall down. Before we see some trains on test on the incline I uh, just want to say a huge thank you to all the new subscribers uh, it's much appreciated cheers and enjoy some of the running videos.